Hello, welcome to Spotline with Warson. I'm your host, If, and today's show features Katie Sheehan Lopez, and she's a SNAP Ed Nutrition Educator at Cornell Cooperative Extension. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, tell us a little bit about the SNAP Ed. So, SNAP Ed is a national program. We used to be known as Eat Smart New York, so I've been on the show a bunch of times before um, as Eat Smart New York. It is the same thing, we just have a brand new name. So, we're SNAP Ed and we educate low-income people all over New York State about healthy eating and physical activity. So I work mostly in Ulster County. Um, I do a lot of work in Kingston and Ellenville, and I go to places where people are already gathering at the hospital, at food pantries, at grocery stores, and I do education on um, healthy eating, lots of cooking demonstrations, because I really want people to know what to do to eat healthy, but also have recipes that actually taste good so they'll go home and eat them. Um, so my office is based in Kingston, but I spend a lot of time in Ellenville, and so people might see me all over the community. Cool, okay. So what's the difference between a SNAP and SNAP Ed? SNAP people might know as uh, what we used to call food stamps. So it mm -hmm. stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, and it is money every month that families that qualify for get to spend on food for their household. So um, SNAP is money going into the house to buy food and SNAP Ed is the nutrition education part of it because we not only want people to have the resources to have food in their house, um, but we want people to know how to best use those resources. So that's why we focus on getting people to eat more fruits and vegetables, getting people to drink less sugary drinks, uh, do more physical activity and also to save money while shopping for food because the SNAP dollars do not necessarily cover an entire month's worth of food. They might just make it through a week, two weeks, um, maybe three weeks. And so at the end of the month, people might be struggling to buy groceries. And so we want to help people stretch their food dollars, but also eat healthy while they're doing it because it's hard. it, it can be hard to do both things at once unless you really... Um, have some education behind that. All right, so what are some easy ways I can do to eat healthy? So eating healthy does not have to be complicated. It's probably very similar to what you learn in school. I hope this looks familiar. Yeah. Yes, okay. So um, this is the my plate. It's from the USDA, and it shows all of the different food groups that we want to eat from every day. And so it doesn't have to be Every meal looks exactly like this, or even every day looks exactly like this, but over the course of time, this is more or less what we should be eating. And so our food groups are divided up into five categories. We have uh, fruits and vegetables. I think we all know what fruits and vegetables are. We have our grains, which are things like rice, pasta, cereal, bread. Um, and those are a small portion of the plate there which is a place where a lot of people go wrong. You know, a lot of people are eating very big portions of grains, like a whole plate of rice and then a little bit of vegetables on the side. Yeah. And you're smiling because it sounds yeah. familiar, right? Really familiar. And really familiar. Um, and then the protein group is the meat, fish, uh, but also the things that are not animals. So eggs, beans, peanuts, um, pumpkin seeds, other kinds of seeds, all of those things are foods that are high in protein. Also a relatively small part of the plate. And then off on the side we have the dairy group, which is off to the side because most people drink their dairy as, as milk. Um, so with, you know, with the my plate, some of the key takeaways are that half of the plate is fruits and vegetables. So um, this is not something most people actually achieve. Most of us have, have it reversed probably. So it's mostly grains and protein. And then, you know, the fruits and vegetables are a smaller portion, kind of sprinkled throughout the day. And so we really want to work on flipping that around and um, eat meals that are more, I guess, plant forward is the, the way people are talking about it now. But this is a goal for half of our foods to be fruits and vegetables. Um, and the grains and protein, the same thing. We have healthy choices within each food group. So we have a choice between refined grains like white rice and white bread or whole grains like the brown rice, um, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, all of those products. And so we want to make sure we're getting at least half of our grains from whole grains and not just eating like piles and piles of um, 
refined grain products and not enough fruits and vegetables. But um, isn't eating healthy expensive? And how can people save money and eat healthy at the same time? So it does not have to be expensive. A lot of people have the idea that it, it is very healthy to eat expensive. If you go to a health food store, for example, um, there are lots of you know organic products and all different kinds of things that, that are really expensive. Um, even in the health food aisle here at the ShopRite in Ellenville, it's its own separate aisle of you know the healthy foods and you know really they're they're a little bit more expensive but really they should be mixed in with the rest of the the groceries in the store because you don't have to be purchasing organic foods or um, kind of fancier brands that are quote unquote healthy. Um, so when you're trying to save money on food, there's a couple of things you can do. One is having a really a good plan. I think planning is probably the most overlooked part of saving money on food um, because you have to, you know, really just sit down, kind of write out what you're going to eat for the week, um, make a shopping list, go shopping, and then you have everything you need at home. So you're never going to have to realize you don't have enough food, resort to ordering a, a pizza or something unhealthy that's also going to cost you a lot of money. So really having that plan can help help you eat healthy, it can help you save money because you can work with sales, you work with what you already have, um, even work with food pantries that are in the area and are, you might know kind of what they have already in stock and um, it's going to save you time also. Because one of the biggest things cool. I find is if I get home and I don't have a plan, um, it's fairly stressful. <laughs> you might think it's not stressful um, as someone who's not planning dinner for a family every night, but if you walk in and you have people looking at you like, where's dinner, what are we having, and, and you're just standing in front of the fridge trying to figure out um, you know, what we can all eat that everyone's going to be happy and that you have everything and is not going to take a long time or have a lot of cleanup, um, having that plan is really key to getting that all um, taken care of without the stress of thinking about it every day. Um, so having a plan is really important. Also, making as much as you can at home is really kind of a key to both eating healthy and saving money. So um, the recipe we're going to make today is an oatmeal recipe, but it has some flavor in it. Um, it has, it's going to have oatmeal and, or, sorry, apple and cinnamon. So it's healthy, it has a fruit, um, but I'm making it myself as opposed to buying the packets where I can just tear the top off, mix it up. Um, those are going to cost you more because you're paying for that convenience and they're also um, not as healthy. They have a lot of extra salt and extra sugar, which we don't always think about salt in our oatmeal, but it, it's there. Um, so we're gonna, things like that you can, you can do on your own, try to save money. I'm not saying we should make, make everything, you know, like making your own bread is, you know, time consuming and we wanna try to balance the amount of time we put into preparing food and, um, you know, the amount of money we're really saving by doing our own work, but making as much as we can really helps. And then also um, being efficient, and this goes back to having a plan. So if you can cook once and eat multiple times during the week, that's going to save you even more time. So when I make my oatmeal, I, if I were to make this at home, I would make maybe not one batch, but maybe two, maybe three or four, depending on how many people are eating oatmeal every day, and then I just microwave it in the morning. So I have a convenient food, but I have already made it. So I know exactly what's in it. If you take those packets of oatmeal, you don't really have a control over how much salt and other ingredients are in there. Um, so lots of things can be made in big batches, put in the freezer, put in the fridge, and eaten later in the week so you don't have to resort to less healthy snack foods. Okay, so why don't we get started? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna put on my my handy apron here. All right, and you're gonna help me out with my <laughs> my oatmeal prep. Excited. Okay, great. So, have you ever made oatmeal before from the? Never. But you've made the packet. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is a little bit different, and normally I would make it on a on the stove in a big mm -hmm. pot, but. You know, this is what we, we have to work with here. So my ingredients here are um, just the plain, old-fashioned rolled oats. Um, they, you know, store brand is totally fine. 
There are a couple different kinds of oatmeal um, cuts. There are steel cut oats, which are more um, chunky pieces where it's not a rolled out nice and flat and so it takes yeah. a lot longer to cook and it has a different texture. So it's really just personal preference and how long you want your breakfast to take. Um, so we have our oatmeal, we have an apple, so I'm going to chop that up and throw it in there. I have raisins, I have cinnamon, and then I have water. So water's already ready to go. All right, so what we're going to do is first I'm going to give those measuring cups to you, and you're going to measure out for me... Let's double it. Well, let's not double it. We'll do three quarters of a cup of oatmeal <coughs> in here. And I think I already got this opened up for you. So, you're doing math. Sorry about that. Oh, God. Fractions. <laughs> I'm never good at this. You don't have to um, take them apart, actually. If you want to, you can start to make it. So you can just use it like this. So we'll do a quarter cup and then a half cup. Quarter and a half. A quarter and a half. And then while you do that, I'm going to pour in the water. So I'm putting um, an, a cup and a half of water in here. And I'm going to turn it on high so I can get it boiling. It doesn't have to be totally exact. Okay, and I'm, I forgot a big stirring spoon, so I'm just gonna use, make it work here. So I'm gonna try not to melt my plastic spoon. So anytime you make oatmeal like this, and it actually does tell you on the back of the canister here, um, you use uh, twice as much water as oatmeal. So if you ever um, don't have a recipe, and you just have a cup of oatmeal, use two cups of water. If you have Three cups of oatmeal, you do six cups of water. And that's kind of an easy way to get it, to figure it out without using a recipe. And then I'm gonna use raisins, so I'll give you this. You can do two tablespoons of raisins, so the tablespoon is the big one. Um, and again, it's not gonna be perfect because they're all sticky and, yeah. And you can throw a few extra in there if you want. I think a few bonus raisins would be great. Not too many. So <laughs> the reason I say that, um, sometimes if you empty a container or a salt shaker right over the bowl of the pot, if too much comes out, you're, you're done. You can't get them back. So, um, so I always do it kind of to the side and then I throw it in. Because I've had that experience before and it'll ruin the whole thing. Especially Definitely with if it's, my meatloaf last night. I heard about the meatloaf. What happened to your what happened to your meatloaf? Excess salt. All right, let's continue with this. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm also going to give you that while I chop up the apple, and um, what you want is one teaspoon of cinnamon. So you don't want to use the big, huge one. You just want this blue one right here. And so our water is boiling. And I'm going to just chop up this apple very carefully. All right, great. So this adding flavor. And I'll just chop this up into kind of little squares here. I'm not bothering to peel it because, um, you know, there is some nutrition in the peel. As long as you wash it, you're kind of good to go. You really don't need to peel it. And also every extra step that you have to do to a, a fruit or vegetable, or any food to prepare it, is something that's going to maybe, if you're not someone that really likes to cook, it seems it's extra work. So it's going to take extra time and maybe make you less likely to do it. So it's fine with one apple, but if you had, if you're making it for a family and you had a lot, are you going to stand there and peel six apples? Maybe not. So, we will just dump that right in. And stir it up. So, got to get that cinnamon stirred in there. So, we're not adding any extra sugar. Mm -hmm. Just cooking um, the apple and the raisins are what's adding sweetness. So we have natural sugar from the fruit itself. All right, so I have a chunk of cinnamon here. I'm trying to get it, I don't know, if we 
can see that. And this, it really doesn't take a long time for this kind of oatmeal to cook. It takes longer than the microwave version. Um, but it's really, you know, it's five minutes instead of 30 seconds or one minute. So it's, you know, it's not terrible, especially if you make a whole batch of it. Um, the other thing I prefer, I prefer about this one is that um, the instant oats are really just chopped up much smaller. So um, here you have, you know, kind of big pieces. And when they're mm -hmm. chopped up really small, they cook much faster. But they also are a lot mushier. So it's really just your own personal preference. So we're just going to let that cook a little bit. Um, the apples may or may not get cooked all the way through in five minutes. If you want them really cooked, you could chop them smaller or mm -hmm. you could cook them ahead. Um, it's really, you know, again, personal preference. And um, the other thing I was going to say is one of the bad things about cooking oatmeal is washing the pot afterwards. So if you let it sit, if you take the oatmeal out and then let it sit on the counter all day and don't get to it until the nighttime, it's all hardened on there. Yeah. So this is another good reason to make it ahead and um, just have it so you can microwave it. So you're only washing an oatmeal pot one time. So we're trying to think of all these little things we can to, um, to save, save time and save money. All right, so let's take a look at this. I don't know how long it's been. Probably hasn't quite been five minutes. Okay. So I think it's looking good. What do you think? Yeah, better. better Does it better, look? Yeah, better than the container package. Well. It looks better than the container, right? So the other thing I like to point out about the the um, the packets, and I didn't bring any with me today, but next time you're at the store, if you look at the box of the packets, um, there's lots of stuff on the, the box that makes it look really delicious, right? There's yeah. pictures of fresh blueberries in the little pitcher with cream in it. Um, no one puts cream in a pitcher to then put it in their oatmeal, right? It's all yeah. just kind of a picture to make it look nice. And there's certainly not fresh fruit in that box of oatmeal. So when you rip that packet open, you find the little pieces of dehydrated fruit, which is fine, um, but it's, it's a little bit misleading when you're looking at it in the store and you see this one, which is pretty plain, Mm -hmm. And you see the other one, which has all these colors on it. It's tempting to grab the other one because you know it's convenient and it looks really nice. But really, at the end of the day, um, this one's probably, it's definitely better for you. And it's even a little bit cheaper. Um, most people I know eat not one packet of oatmeal, but two or maybe even three at one time. So everything on that label, the sugar, the salt, everything is going to be doubled or tripled. Okay. So, let's try this. The apples are still going to be pretty crunchy. Crunchy is my motto. Crunchy is your motto. Okay. So, and I did burn it a little bit. That's okay. And you could also, it does not have to be apples. So, you could put any other fruit you want in here. You could put, um, ooh, that looks pretty good. Um, pears bananas, blueberries, frozen fruit would be great in here because, you know, it's already chopped up and, mm -hmm. and ready to be eaten. Or you could even put applesauce in. If you really don't want to take the time to chop an apple, you could just crack the jar, dump it in, get the flavor, but not the, the chunks. Okay, so we're going to let this cool off a little. Taste it. Okay, so what's the what's the verdict? It's hot. It's hot. It's okay, good. it's hot and good. And it's way better than the store brand. And it's better than the than the store brand. You mean the packet? Yeah. Okay, so it's definitely less sweet than the packet, but you could, if you really wanted to, you could add either an extra apple would be great to add sweetness, extra raisins. You could add a little spoonful <clears throat> of brown sugar on your bowl. When you eat the packets, they have about three extra spoons or extra packets of sugar per per packet of oatmeal. So um, even if you make this and add a little bit, you're going to have more control and you're going to have less sugar at the end of the day. And this is going to keep you a lot more full than if you just ate that little packet. 
All right, so it's quick and easy, it didn't take very long, and lots of ways to vary it to make it kind of suit your, your taste buds. And one thing I want to add is that when, when you're cooking at home and it comes out great, you also get this accomplishment in the end. I, I did good. Yes, exactly. It's, it is really satisfying. Not everyone likes to cook. Um, but, you know, those people that don't like to cook, you know, I, we still have to eat and we have to feed ourselves. And if you can, even, you know, one or two extra times a week, mm -hmm. um, instead of ordering something or heating up a frozen, um, a frozen pizza or something like that, you know, think about what you could make that's quick and easy and try to incorporate that into your diet because it is, there are so many benefits. And it yeah. can be really satisfying. You can make things exactly how you like them. And I also have an image <coughs> of the nutrition facts. Not the nutrition facts, but a few, um, a few key points about this recipe, mm -hmm. which... Probably on screen right about now. Um, it's only about 86 cents per serving. Um, it's zero grams of added sugar and it's high fiber. No so, hmm? and no sodium. No sodium, that's the other one. Okay, so healthier, cheaper, everyone's happy. All right, is there anything else you wanted to mention? The only other thing I would like to mention is that in addition to eating healthy, we do want to make sure we're doing enough physical activity. And that is another goal of SNAPED is to teach people about the importance of physical activity and um, make sure people are taking advantage of opportunities that exist. So here in Ellenville, you have a lot of hiking trails, you have a lot of, um, you know, outdoor space. There's a new gym mm -hmm. in town. Um, and the hospital um, also organizes walks and um, hikes, I believe, on a monthly basis. I'm really not sure. So getting enough physical activity is really important for your health, blood sugar, weight management, blood pressure, all of those things. And so we want to make sure we're shooting for at least 150 minutes a week or about two and a half hours a week. You know, if you're not even close to that, just adding a little bit every day is a really good start. It's a hard time of year because we have, it's getting dark at five o'clock now. Yeah. Um, it's staying dark in the morning. It's colder. So it's really easy to say, ah, I'm just not going to go today. Um, but I would encourage everyone to, um, to try to make some time to go outside, take a walk or whatever kind of physical activity you can get. Um, all those minutes add up during the day. So that's a really important part that mm -hmm. people often overlook. Okay, so for more information on today's topic, you can contact Katie Sheehan over here by emailing kms369 at cornell.edu or by calling 845-340-3990. Well, I guess thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Hope to see you again on another TNS. Okay. We'll make some more food. All right. This is it. Signing off.